they abstain from violence? Do you remember who the International Crisis Group is? The International Crisis Group, this is their report on understanding Islamicism. The International Crisis Group is the one we told you last year that helped create the Responsibility to Protect initiative through Cass Sunstein's wife. Who's at the head of this? Who's doing a lot of the funding of this? George Soros. This is the group that pushed us into war with Libya. And uh, the responsibility to protect. I will tell you that they're holding true to their name. They have a responsibility to protect, and they are protecting. It's just not you. It's his butt to rear. Now, you'd think that some of this would be a news story, but this group, his butt to rear, is so ignored by the media that they hold a conference that advocates replacing the Constitution in favor of Islamic law. They talk about a violent, revolutionary overthrow of the United States. And they do it just weeks before 9-11, and there's not a peep. And they did it in the hometown of the President of the United States, Chicago, Illinois. The conference was titled, Revolution in the Muslim World, From Tyranny to Triumph. What you're about to see tonight are the clips of this conference. The video was taken in a large room with a couple hundred people in it. The audio is kind of hard to hear because of all of the echo in the room. You will hear the voice and see the speaker, and you will hear the impassioned plea as they make their case for the end of capitalism and the spread of Sharia law, the spread of globalism, and the return of the Khalifa or the Caliphate. It happened on June 26th between 2 and 5 in the afternoon at a hotel just outside of Chicago. All the raw audio is now available at a link at glenbeck.com. I urge you tonight to please use this network. Use this network. Share it with your friends. We made this network free, even though you support all of and fund everything that we do. We um, made this network free for two weeks so people could try it out for two weeks. And if they found nothing of value, they could just cancel and go away, no questions asked. Tonight, I would ask if you have some friends that would listen to this story and listen to these words, that you would get them to come in and watch this and share it with a friend. I don't care if they cancel tomorrow. It's okay. This story must get out. Tonight, we will also give you the history of where this group came from and the history of the Muslim Brotherhood. But we want to start with the actual conference. This is a section that they called Breaking the shackles. Watch. We are ready for success and martyrdom. And what greater martyrdom than speaking the a word of truth before an unjust ruler? The West was trembling with fear as it should be. Every day contradicting itself. One day with the tyrants and the next day with the people. But the Ummah is far smarter than they expected. This only recognized that they were the real enemy. Only a Khilafah will heal our wounds. We have been victims of their corruption, their ideas, their systems for far too long. We want our ideas, our systems, our glory. Sticks, bullets, and drones are no match for this Ummah's power. The shackle of ignorance and fear have been broken, and there is no turning back. Honor awaits us. This Ummah is still standing after the collapse of communism. And this Ummah will continue to stand after the collapse of capitalism. So break all the shackles. The shackles of nationalism. The shackles of capitalism. The shackles of secularism and tribalism. Do not allow for division. After all, our God is one. Our messenger is one. Our book is one. Our Qibla is one. And our Khilafah is one. So uproot all these systems and firmly plant your Khilafah. Uproot, uproot all of these systems and plant the caliphate. And he was tired, he said. We are tired of living under their system. We will live under ours. Take note that that is capitalism that is keeping them in shackles. You, by the way. The other shackle is nationalism. Now, why do they hate nationalism? Watch. Whether we're in Toronto, 
California, New York, Mississippi, Texas, or wherever else we may come from. It's for all of us. We Muslims in the United States are an inseparable and unshakable part of an international movement, and we should never accept anybody offering nationalism or some tribal identity that separates our beautiful body from each other. I want you to remember that part. They don't want their body to be separated. They are one Uma, one Uma, one group of people living under Islam, no matter where they live. Now, you know who else speaks very similar to this, hates nationalism, and thinks America is the only one standing in the way of change? That would be the guy who helped put this together, the International Crisis Group, George Soros. If I may quote George Soros from his own book, the main obstacle to a stable and just world is the United States. The Bush agenda is nationalistic. It emphasizes the use of force and ignores global problems whose solution require international cooperation. Changing the attitude and policies of the United States remains my top priority. Age of fallibility, George Soros. I'm going to go back to the theory that I had. I said this on January 31st. I said this complete uh, thought, put it up on a chalkboard. Radicals, Islamists, Communists, and Socialists will, one, work together against Israel. Two, work together against capitalism. Three, work together to overturn stability. Have they done those things? Part two, the protest will become contagious. They will cascade. They will sweep the Middle East. They will destabilize Europe and the world. That's January of 2011. Of course, that idea was panned. But can you see why this works? This works because these people may not have very much in common. They are not really truly working together in the traditional sense. They are working against a common enemy. And that common enemy is the Western way of life, Israel, capitalism and the United States of America. So they will work together until it doesn't match up anymore. But by that time, capitalism and the Western way of life is gone. It's time for us to wake up. More in a minute. Uh, I told you a minute ago that um, we really needed to um, work together. We need to come together because the left, the radicals, the Islamists are all working together. We have the power, we have a power to stop this and the power to stop it not through guns or anything else. It's not too late. What we have to do is grab on to each other and hold on. Hold on to the truth and hold on to goodness. America is great because America is good. But that requires all of us as individuals to do good and all of us as individuals to hang on to each other. Our underwriter tonight is FreedomWorks. One of the big reasons you joined the GBTV community is because you understand that we are under attack. The ideas of a limited government of capitalism and the Western way of life, everything spelled out in the Constitution. The Constitution itself is under assault. You understand the best way to fight back is to be part of a solution. Organizing with like-minded people is the first great step. Get yourself educated to be part of that unwavering, immovable 10%. That's what makes real change, and that's what's happening. Freedom Works, a great resource, and they are fighting the good fight. But FreedomWorks.org is now offering a pocket constitution for anyone who requests it to help promote the constitution. This is offer is uh, available only for GBTV and radio viewers. I invite you to go to freedomworks.org. That's freedomworks.org because freedom works. <laughs> 